Hey folks, welcome to ADSR. I'm Stephen Ellistad. Make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel and follow on social media for great production content. So in this final drum synth and machine tutorial, I wanted to take a look at the percussion elements because a lot of times we like to use pitch percussion and manipulate tones. This is a great way to do that using a synthesis engine as opposed to working with samples because we can do a lot of real-time variations very simply with automation or with just tone shaping. Actually, we've got a cool part built in. I've gone ahead and I've inserted a percussion drum synth on this next empty slot. This is what we had come up with previously uh, from the earlier tutorials. And with the toms. And that has a little bit of a, a ride symbol going on as well. So the percussion, we have three different engines. We have our fractal engine, our kettle engine, and our shaker engine. The fractal engine is based upon the same system as the fractal tom, and it uses a series of oscillators. And in fact, when we come in here, we can manipulate both uh, harmonic or dissonant functions of the oscillators, uh, amplitude and frequency modulation, as well as each of the three frequencies themselves. So there's a lot of really dynamic synthesis and of course as with everything we can automate that by either clicking on the ring or hitting auto on our controller and adjusting a macro knob. I'm going to go ahead and paste in a pattern I had already put together and I can manipulate some of these So you can see there's a ton of shaping possibilities right there. If we go into dissonance. Really, the possibilities are quite endless. As always, we have a, a velocity which just modulates the velocity of the notes that are triggered by the controller or the velocity curves that are written in the MIDI down here. If we come into our main section, though, of course, we can adjust our tuning. And the decay. So a couple of things I want to mention on the fractal though. Tuning and decay are pretty straightforward. Tuning hold is a really powerful on or off type of parameter. By default it's off and that means that we can manipulate our tuning in real time. We can automate it, we can shift it. But if we do tune hold, what's going to happen is the tuning hold is not going to actually take effect until the next MIDI note is triggered, which makes it more useful for working in, say, an arpeggiator or something like that. We do have our glide and impact settings to get those kind of scooped attacks that sound pretty cool. Impact, again, is, is modeling a virtual impact of, say, a stick on a percussion instrument. So if you want to harden the edge up of your percussion, we're going to bring the impact up. And then in a similar style, we have our kettle. And this is a synthesized version of a timpani or kettle drum. And so we can actually, again, tune it and adjust the decay. And automate that. But we have a couple other interesting things. Impact, we're, we're pretty familiar with that. But now we can manipulate something called puff or damp. And puff is kind of how that sound balloons as the air is pressurized inside of that timpani or kettle drum. So manipulating that, we get kind of a, a wobble or a, a puff of sound as the envelope changes. So we can almost hear this noise, this airy noise that's created. Uh, damping is going to actually, how does the how does the drum sound damp down? So you can think of it as a, as an aggressive type of release setting. And I like to go with a more intense damp as well as maybe longer decay to bring out a different profile to the tail end of that tone. So lots of really cool ideas to play with as far as pitch percussion goes inside a machine's drum synth. And I encourage you to explore those both with performed parts, written parts, and arpeggiated parts. Lastly, the thing that's really cool about this is our shaker functions. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this current part. And we will just go ahead and drop in a shaker. 
And again, everything is pitch dependent if we want to lower pitch. But we've got a lot of cool tone shaping. First of all, we've got a couple of different envelopes. The machine envelope has a much more straightforward, linear type of attack and release by default. And so it gets a more of a mechanistic sound. But we can always shape that. And manipulating the attack, hold, and release lets us get all kinds of different tone shapings. Realistic is going to have more of a curved profile to the attack and the release. All of the shakers, we can manipulate our tuning, of course. And we have a resonant filter, which will let us throw an envelope over top of that and sweep that around as we need to, or just set it to something that matches the timbre of our current production. And grain brings out, as you might expect, a granularity in your tone. Now, that's a pretty subtle effect, but different settings of the filter will certainly affect how much that pops out, as will, say, a compressor in the chain afterwards. And as always, if we hit tab, we can see now that we have a more visual representation. We have velocity scaling here. What's the uh, degree of filter as well as the granularity and we can change our engine attack and release. So some pretty cool stuff there. One last thing though that's really, really useful and I like to use this a lot is the performer setting. In the performer setting, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of my part because in this case, I just draw one single part and extend it for whatever duration I want. There's not a lot of pattern variation that we can manipulate, but we do have the ability to adjust the accent up or down. So no accents, a very flat performance, which is nice for adding layers of energy without syncopating against your rhythm. And as I bring the accent up, we'll hear a groove come out. Of course, the filter here is going to shape that quite a bit as far as the tonality. And by shaping the release, we can really change the, the nature of this sound into almost this wash of color. It's almost a white noise, but it's got a rhythmic factor and the accent coming up or down can add energy. And a lot of times I'll actually like to layer that against the hi-hat and bring it up as needed, whether by filter or by gain to adjust, you know, levels of tension and energy underneath, say a rhythmic, you know, hat or a ride part. And lastly, we can change our fills from straight time to double time and triple time. And of course, we can flip between these with either automation or by writing it in. And so there's a lot of cool things we can do with this performer envelope as well. And let's go ahead and, and maybe adjust this. I found a really cool way of working is to, say, create some interrupted parts. And maybe even changing the pitch of those. And maybe, say, ramping it up. You can get some neat kind of rhythmic climbing effects. Couple that with, say, automating a filter. Lots of cool things we can do there. So that's a look at the percussion section of the drum synth and machine. I hope you found that useful. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment on the YouTube page. Please make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel and follow on social media for great production content. I'm Stephen Ellisted. Thanks a lot and have a great day.